So you want to know how a GMO is made? You're not alone. It's one of the top questions about biotechnology. There are different ways plants can be genetically engineered. We'll use the story of the papaya in Hawaii to walk you through one of them. Step one, determine whether genetic engineering is the most effective way to solve a plant's problem, such as a disease or damage from pests. For centuries, traditional plant breeding has been used to fight pests, environmental stress, such as drought, as well as to improve taste and nutrition. The reasons to develop GMOs are no different today, but GMOs can be created more quickly and more precisely. Other breeding methods can take decades to produce results and aren't able to be as precise in focusing on one genetic trait or isolating a solution to a specific problem. Since the 1940s, the Hawaiian papaya industry had been battling a problem, the destructive and rapidly spreading papaya ring spot virus, aka PRSV. PRSV deforms the papaya fruit and in young plants, destroys the plant's ability to produce fruit at all. PRSV is transmitted by insects that feed on the fruit. Many methods were deployed to try to stop the destructive virus. In the early 1960s, farmers moved papaya production from one Hawaiian island to another, from the island of Oahu to the big island of Hawaii in the Puna district. The virus ultimately reached Puna. Other methods didn't work either, including using insecticides for the insects spreading the virus, giving the plants a mild strain of the virus to create natural inoculation, or destroying infected trees. The virus just continued to spread. 53 million pounds of fresh papaya were being produced annually when PRSV was first discovered in Pune in 1992. By 1998, that amount had been cut in half to 26 million pounds. The crops and livelihood of farmers were being destroyed in front of their eyes. Moreover, for consumers, the availability of fresh papaya and papaya juice for fruit, salads, smoothies, and other products were threatened. A powerful new tool, biotechnology, was now available to fight back. Farmers and researchers turned to genetic engineering, beginning in 1985, for help. Step two, identify the gene or genetic material that could solve the problem, like providing resistance to the disease or pest, and study the genetic makeup of the plant that needs the trait. Researchers and farmers had to find a way to make the papaya plant resistant to the deadly virus. PRSV resistance was the genetic trait needed to solve the problem. Researchers knew that if plants contained certain genetic material from the virus within their own DNA, they were protected. If they could insert a copy of this gene from the virus itself into the papaya's genetic makeup, the plants would be protected. Step three, copy the trait from a donor organism and implant it into the plant's DNA. Researchers isolated a PRSV gene from the virus itself. Then they needed a way to get the genetic material into the papaya plant's own DNA. Researchers deployed a commonly used technique in biotechnology called transformation, a process by which a copy of genetic material from a specific trait is inserted into cells. There are many ways to transform a cell. In this case, the researchers used a high-speed particle bombardment method. Through a high-pressure insertion device, the gene from the virus was inserted into the DNA of the papaya seed. The genetic material made the plant resistant to the ring spot virus, just as a flu shot makes people resistant to the flu. The researchers were able to successfully transform 17 plants. These plants contained this gene from the virus and produced a protein from the virus that helped the plants become resistant to the PRSV infection. Step four, plant the new seed and test it. The final step was to plant the seeds and carefully test the resulting plants. One line of plants demonstrated consistent resistance to the virus. After several years of testing, it was determined that this line performed well on the farms, was safe for people to eat, and was of commercial quality. Success was achieved. One variety of transgenic papaya, the rainbow, yielded about 125,000 pounds of marketable fruit per acre per year, 25 times the amount of fruit produced per acre by a non-GM variety infected by PRSV. These tests took about seven years, including food safety and environmental review by the FDA, USDA, and EPA. Once regulatory approval was gained, the Hawaiian farmers chose to start using the new papaya seeds. The result? The harvesting of the new PRSV-resistant papaya began in 1998, and by 2001, the industry had rebounded, producing 46 million pounds of fresh papaya, free of PRSV. This kept the vibrant papaya industry alive in Hawaii, and ensured consumers had access to high-quality papaya and papaya juice at a reasonable cost. 
Genetic engineering allowed the introduction of PRSV resistance without altering other traits of the papaya or changing the plants in other ways. The plants were exactly the same in nutrition and safety. As of 2010, 70% of Hawaii's papaya industry is GM papaya. GM papaya has been grown and consumed in the U.S. for more than a decade. This is just one GMO story. We hope to share more with you. Please, share your comments.